Hi, it's your curl friend Gigi back with another video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the keys to a successful weight loss journey after bariatric surgery. Stay tuned. <laughs> First and foremost, I want to thank all my new subscribers. Welcome, welcome here. And if you know anyone that can be blessed by all this information, please go ahead and share that with them. It is very disheartening for me to know um, the things that I am being told recently by people that know bariatric patients. And unfortunately, that is that many who have gotten the surgery, they have gained the weight back. Now, not all the weight, but half. And it really saddens me because I know what we have to go through to go through this process and get the surgery. I know, I remember my appointments. I mean, I, I went through seven months. Many of you probably have gone through it, will go through it if you're considering to have the surgery. Seven months prior to having my surgery, just trying to get myself started um, mentally, physically on the journey that I was going to take on and that I'm in and have been for six years now. So I know the process prior to getting the surgery and I know what it like, how frightening, like I see the comments that you guys, like some of you in, in my last videos um, past. Have, have like oh my god i'm not sure you know i'm nervous about what i'm doing i'm not sure exactly how it's gonna go i'm not sure to even get the surgery so i i understand trust me and then once you get it you're just like oh my goodness is this gonna go right so i want to share with you guys things that have helped me two three four five and now six years and plus to go because i'm going to continue on um, implementing this as part of my life journey now with the surgery and this is not something that just especially if you got the gastric sleeve this is not something that you just get and then it disappears you're st stuck with this forever and it's not really stuck it's been a blessing but a lot of people may may see it that way so it doesn't have to be something negative and it can be something that can be a blessing to you so i want to help you with that and first things first i want to say it is very important when you are on this journey now to make sure and to forget about the old life you used to live like don't think that you can just get away with eating as much as you used to eat i mean you shouldn't be able to but some people i don't know somehow can get away with it but try to maintain so cal um calories are a big thing okay i will tell you that two three years plus forever calories is going to be a big thing i know a lot of us like if we get the surgery and i i remember when i first had the surgery i had that thought i'm like wow i had the surgery now this is like amazing i don't have to worry about ever, ever gaining weight again like that but that's not true and that's probably what a lot of people are experiencing years after the surgery gaining weight a lot of it back too um, a lot of these stories I'm hearing, I mean, almost half of the weight that they, uh, it's just, it, it, it's a lot. Like, if they were like 300, they'll gain half of that back that they lost. It's just, it should not be. So, calories. Calories is very important for you to absolutely keep track of calories. Now, you don't have to necessarily count all your calories, but you want to, well, at the beginning, you might have to. You know, you might have to, um, I would say, develop a meal plan for yourself. Develop a consistent um, way of eating. You know, everybody has different food choices, di different options that they want to have. That's fine. But first things first, I would say get you a notebook, okay? Get you a notebook and write down what are some healthy options that you may have and you can even list it down you can say okay um meals snacks you know it's okay to to snack little things here and there now we're talking two three plus years after the surgery um it's not the same if you just had the surgery you need to stick to your liquid diet you need to stick to mushy food for a little bit okay because your body is still trying to recover uh, so I'd say this would be more after the two years because 
your body the first two years are, are are rough are rough and you're trying to like set yourself up for success here in order to do that you need to make sure that you maintain um what the doctor is telling you you know the liquids the mushy food you can get into some solid foods i remember that like a year in i was eating solids but there's a really uncomfortable feeling that if you have a gastric sleeve you know what i'm talking about you feel when you eat heavy and i do not recommend you go into really hard solid foods until like maybe a year or so i mean you can try it out if it works it works but it's it's hard it's hard the first two years so what i would say is get you a notebook you know write down healthy options you can look it up you know some people don't like peanut butter some people like peanut butter so you just add that in some people like apples some people don't like apples there's some recipes that you can make you know as a snack you can have like um an apple like a slice of apple and put some like peanut butter over it and that's a that's a healthy snack um or you know for for meals you know uh you you can have some some grilled salmon grilled grilled fish you can have um you can have meats as well you know chicken um chicken breast so just just write down some things and then what you like of course what you like there is no specific straight way of eating you write down what you like you stick to that you create a meal plan and you at that moment i would recommend that you do um, go ahead and track down how many calories does each thing that you wrote, wrote down have. Why? Because you wanna mix and match throughout the week. You don't wanna eat the same thing over and over again, but you wanna keep it, now this is the key now, you wanna keep your calories, you have to keep them under a thousand. I'm gonna be real with you. That thing over a thousand and all this, that's cool if you have a full stomach. If you're not a bariatric patient, you can get away with it. But many years after the surgery, unless you're burning those calories at the gym, I'm gonna tell you right now, like for example, for, for me, on a day when I'm not I'm not working out, I'm just going to work, you know, doing things around the house, I keep it at 800 calories most. That is on a day where I'm not really doing that. On a day when I'm active, I may be either exercising or just moving a little bit more around, more walking, you know, um, and I know I'm going to be burning a little bit more, then I up to like 900, the most, and that is with some activity, some exercise. This is if you want to, and then you can play around with these numbers, but this is if you want to maintain or lose weight. Of course, you're gonna like like let's say that you eat 900 calories in the day, and you burn two three hundred. You are in a caloric deficit, so you're probably gonna lose weight <laughs> um, as a bariatric patient. If let's say you um, are not working out and you're just like doing things around the house or running errands, going to work, do then doing things around the house, then you want to keep it between 800 to 850, 850. Um, because you will burn some calories, but you're not going to burn as much. And you want to keep it. You don't want to reach that thousand. <laughs> you do not want to reach that. I'm telling you. I feel like a lot of these people that unfortunately are gaining the weight back. Wait, gaining the weight back. I don't think you can ever go full blown. Like, <laughs> I have heard they, they've gone up there, but it's not full fully. It's because they haven't discovered this. They don't, they're not aware of this. And it's important, it's important that you know, um, you have to have an awareness of of this, you know? And the way I came across this is just being aware. I mean, especially once I started joining the gym, working out, I was like, hold on, I have to be more mindful of what I'm eating, how many calories it has, because you don't want to track down every single day all the things, but you want to have a system, something established for yourself where you don't have to really think about every single little thing because you've already created um, a plan for yourself. Okay, these are the food options that no matter how I mix and match them, they're going to keep me at a decent. And hey, sometimes you can indulge, you know, I do. I have a little donut here and there. 
But don't make it a habit. Don't make it an everyday thing. Do not do that to yourself. Because if you have a donut, let's say every single day, it's a lot of cal calories. Could be a, let's say minimum 200, because you know it's gonna be at least 200. Um, there ain't no, uh, I mean, unless you make a donut for yourself, like handmade donut that you can finesse it being under 200, get some protein in there. But um, it's probably gonna be 200 calories. And the problem with that is that you're going to not have enough room now for the rest of the day to intake the enough protein that you need and all the rest of the nutrients that you need in, in your food. You, you want to leave room. So now and then having like a donut here and there, having some sweets, there's nothing wrong with that. We're human. Uh, but you don't want to make it happen. And you don't want to make it a thing where you're doing this every day. Now you're jeopardizing the, your nutrients and you're gaining weight absolutely not and if you are doing that no judgment here but if you are doing that make sure that you're working out so you can burn those calories and you can have room to be able to um just make yourself some some good food you know healthy quinoa you know whatever um fish meats veggies season that up <laughs> so that is my recommendation. Um, I'm not sure if I went in depth. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to follow me on my Instagram. You can message me there. You can just d DM me. You know, let me know if you have any questions. Of course, you can drop any questions or any comments in the comment section down below. But I hope this has helped you. Like I said, as a bariatric patient, you do not want to exceed that amount. That's been my key aside from the supplements that I shared in my previous video. If you haven't checked that out, I'm gonna pin it um, and I'm gonna put it in the description below. Supplements, vitamins, very important. And also watching what you eat and how many calories. Knowing, okay, as a bariatric patient, how many calories is too much? What is gonna help me maintain? What is gonna help me lose weight? How do I manage this? Okay, so I hope this video has helped you. Stay tuned for the next one coming up soon. Bye-bye.